Cool, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Thiago Loredo. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, my journey uh, uh, to build my first uh, Gutenberg block. It was really my first one. I have, I have some experience with WordPress, but uh, Gutenberg, uh, I didn't have much time to look into it before. So it was the process of getting there. So if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to interrupt me. And uh, I might not be answered to, uh, I might not be able to answer more complicated questions, but I probably someone in this room will be able to. Uh, but for, I hope you guys at the end of the session will have some pointers on how to start uh, coding if you guys want to. So first of all, uh, thanks to uh, the organizers uh, and volunteers who were helping uh, to make this happen. And to our sponsors too. So uh, this presentation will be divided in a series of questions. They're kind of the questions that I had in mind when, uh, when I started this. So there, there are a lot of them, I know, but uh, they, they will be fast. Um, and there are more questions after that. And then after that, there is a, the questions part. Uh, so first of all, is a question that probably you guys are, are tired by now of what is Gutenberg, but uh, I'll try to give another answer to it. There'll be so many different answers. So, uh, so Gutenberg is just a, a, a different editor experience, roughly speaking. Uh, you have in the left here the, the classic, oops, the classic editor, uh, and here you have the Gutenberg experience. Uh, that's basically, it's a new way, it's kind of more intuitive, more using blocks. That's kind of the, the trend in this publishing uh, business, uh, online publishing. Uh, so, how to, uh, what are these blocks? So these are the blocks I'm talking about. So this big thing here, not big thing, this rectangle here, that's the classic block. Is it possible to turn off these lights in the front? No? Maybe? More contrast? Cool. Um, thank you. Um, so the top one is the, the classic block, which is the, the very same thing as the, the classic editor, but in a block. And you can have as many as you want inside, inside, the, inside your page. Uh, then you have the image block. This, by the way, is, uh, I don't know if you guys know this cat. It's called uh, Wilfred Warrior on Instagram. Make sure, make sure you follow him. It's, it's, it is, it's real. It's, it's so cute, but it's, it's, it is, it's a cute cat. Uh, no, it's not, don't say that. Uh, and there is a list block here. Very simple, these blocks are, they're, they do one thing and they try to do it well. I, I like this principle. And a quote block here. That's, uh, oh, go back. And all these blocks, they're inside a bigger block. So there is this, what we call a column block, which is like two columns, and there are blocks inside this columns block. And again, classic editor and the, and, and the end. Um, what is a Gutenberg block? This is a Gutenberg block, just uh, how to create one. And what are the options available? Like color, I can change uh, what goes inside of this button. There are not a lot of options, it's just very specific for this specific block. Different blocks will have different uh, options. Can you save your colors? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, this has, th this color thing for, for buttons specifically has to be supported by the theme as well. So it, it interacts with the theme you're using. Um, and there I can add uh, a URL. So you can click on the, on the button, see? you can align it, a bunch of stuff. And uh, the blocks you get uh, out of the box, vanilla Gutenberg, you get this many blocks. A lot of them you know, you can achieve the same effect with the class editor, not in a, not in a block uh, fashion. I think, I feel there are a lot of new ones here on the embeds, and it's, it's a really cool feature, like uh, be able to uh, include, for example, uh, a YouTube uh, video from, from the block. It, it looks really nice on the editor. But these are all the blocks. You get them for free. If you install plugins or if you install a theme, you, you're going to have even more blocks. I think that's the plan. They want eventually, they want to 
transport those widgets to inside Gutenberg. To be a block. Yeah, yeah, to be all blocks. No more widgets. Everything will be a block at, at a certain point. So what's the need? If we have all that, what's the need to, uh, why we need to build, uh, be able to build Gutenberg blocks? I think it's uh, for two, th for different reasons. Uh, one of them is because you want to, sometimes what you want is not going to be provided. You want something very specific. Or uh, you want to modify a block, and that's, that's totally uh, fine with, with in this world pre WordPress uh, world. Um, what else? Uh, all this, this URL here, this URLs here are really nice. Uh, the same way we have a marketplace for plugins inside uh, WordPress, uh, people are getting these ideas of providing a marketplace for blocks. A lot of the plugins right now, they will offer a bunch of blocks at once. One plugin, many different blocks. But if you want to search for a specific block, there is not really a way to do it using the default search for plugins inside WordPress. So this ad, uh, search kind of uh, marketplaces here, uh, editorblocks.wp.com and uh, wpgutenberg.io, they you can search for a specific block and uh, see if it's available through a plugin or, or through a, th a theme. Um, yeah, so these are the reasons to know, to get used to uh, Gutenberg building. Um, is it a plugin? Is it a theme? Uh, no, it's not a plugin. It's not a, a theme, but it can leave inside a plugin or it can leave inside a plugin. Did I say plugin twice? No. Oh my God, sorry. Uh, it can leave inside a plugin or it can leave inside a theme. Uh, how to choose one or the other, it depends. It depends on if the nature of the block you want to build, it's something that you want to make it reusable across different themes, put inside a plugin. And the plugin doesn't need to be just for the block. It can be a plugin that offers some functionality and blocks. So that's what's happening, for example, with uh, Yoast. Yoast is an SEO plugin, and now they're offering uh, FAQ blocks, so you can easily build your FAQ section in your site, and a how-to block. So Yoast, if you install latest version of Yoast and try Gutenberg, you're going to see that there are two blocks that uh, Yoast is offering right now on top of the SEO functionality. Question, cool. If you modify it inside a plugin or, or even the theme or block itself, mm -hmm. can you save it? Are they still using word templates and can you save it as a template to reuse? Yes, you can, but that's, that's not, it's a, uh, from the nature of Gutenberg, you can mix and match blocks and, mi and save them as a kind of template. I know that page builders have this concept for a long time, right. that you can you mix and match, and then reuse, 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 reuse. And that's one of the major adventure, uh, adventure, advantages over uh, the classic editor, mm -hmm. being able to reuse stuff that you use all the time. So a basic one. What does it look like? So that's it. It can be just like that. That's not editable, by the way. It's just a text, plain text, and that's a block. And it looks like that. So it, the same thing I'm seeing in the editor screen is going to be the same thing I'm going to see in the, in the front end once I publish. It's very close. It's way, way closer than the, than the, the, classic, the classic editor experience. Um, what languages should I know? Uh, JavaScript, a lot more JavaScript than before. So if you're just used to be on PHP realm, or if you're a developer and you're all just PHP, 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 start transitioning to, uh, to JavaScript in general, especially, and learn React. It's a good thing uh, right now. Or, or, and if you learn React or any other frameworks that are similar to React at this point, uh, it'll be easier to, to go from one framework to another one. Um, so, but you don't need to really, really know React. JavaScript is important. PHP, it's kind of important. CSS is important to, to, to make sure you're styling it uh, properly. Uh, good ways to start a Gutenberg. So this part is really important, I feel. Uh, and it was really important for me. I don't want to start a Gutenberg block uh, from scratch because it, there are some files that it, it's a thing that people have to go through all the time. So. There are ways you can quick start uh, this process. So one of them 
Um, and that's important even to study the nature of them. You can use for two uh, different purposes. Um, the Gutenberg team has this repo on GitHub, uh, GitHub uh, Gutenberg examples from the WordPress uh, people, where they just showcase the capabilities of, uh, of Gutenberg blocks. It's really, and it's really progressive. So you start here, that's the, this basic one is like the most basic one, it's just plain text. And then you go for an editable block where you add the capacity to, to edit whatever you're seeing. And it showcases all the controls available inside a block. We'll see all that later. But uh, that's a really, really nice project. And they're always contributing to it as the, as the Gutenberg project evolves. Another way to start is by using, sorry, so let me go back here. What I did with my plugins, I just got this guy here. I copied it and I modified it. That's what I did to create my own Gutenberg blocks. That's, that was my approach to it because I, I found it was kind of simpler structure and less file so I could understand better what was going on there. But you have this guy here. Um, if you guys are, if you guys know React, there is a, a React tool called Create React App that kind of starts a vanilla React project for you. That's the same idea, but for Gutenberg blocks. It creates all the necessary files, and you can just start. Uh, I think it, it, add, it asks you some questions, how what's like the name of your blocks or whatever. Let me check here. So that's, it, it requires uh, NPM and PX to, to work, uh, which is a, NPM is a package manager and kind of a task runner uh, for a node. Um, so yeah, it asks you some questions before you start. Based on these questions, it's going to generate the necessary files so you can start uh, working on your block. Um, so that's the repo of, the, of this project called Create Guten Block. From, uh, so this is from a guy, a uh, popular guy in the, in the WordPress community called Ahmed Awaz, I think that's his name. I think it was on the other yes, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, the repo for this project. Um, so wait, yeah, great Gutenberg block, zero configuration uh, developer toolkit for building WordPress Gutenberg block plugins. Um, okay. Next question is, what's the usual structure of a Gutenberg block? A very simple one, PHP code and a JavaScript file. That's it. The minimal one, usually, the classic minimal one will be this file here and a JavaScript file. That's all you need. So this is a, this is a block right there. Um, these files can go inside a plugin. It can go inside a theme. But uh, that's all it takes. By the way, uh, I'm going to make uh, this presentation available at the end, and uh, and the code um, that I, I created two blocks here, um, and I'm going to make the the code available on my GitHub account. I'll make sure that Rich like th this will be on the website and stuff. Um, okay, so by the way, let's go back. This guy here will become this block. Vanilla plain text block. I'm searching for it. Yeah, there it is. Basic block. Doesn't do anything. It's just hello block. Once I update it, I do the page, and that's exactly what yeah, I showed that already. Cool. So let's let's go deep inside the code now. It's it's simple. Um, so first part is your PHP part is the part that is going to register the blocks, and you're going to register. Um, the scripts that your block is going to use. This red part here, that's where you're registering. You're saying like, oh, I have a script called block.js. And uh, this, will script, this script will drive the behavior inside Gutenberg. And here I'm saying like, oh, inside, Gut inside Gutenberg, I'm registering this block uh, ID. And it's important, by the way, they're, they're always recommending that people uh, put a prefix uh, in, in, the, in the block name so there are no collision of, uh, of blocks there. 
And, I'm, and what's the next instruction I'm giving here? For this block here that I'm, I'm registering uh, in Gutenberg, I want to use uh, a script that, I, that I, give, I gave this alias here called basic block. Basic block binds to here, and here binds to here, binds to this JavaScript file. And another thing, when I say editor script, what it means, why not script, for example? If I write editor script here, I'm making sure that uh, this JavaScript file will only be loaded inside um, Gutenberg. Not in the front end, not in the page when you publish it, but just inside Gutenberg. Now to the JavaScript part. Remember two parts, one PHP to, to register and to enqueue your, your script and one inside uh, and one JavaScript file that will drive the behavior uh, inside uh, Gutenberg. Three parts, basic ones. The red part are the attributes of your block and how, they're, how it's going to be uh, organized in the Gutenberg editor. Every block has a title, and I can give the title here. And if I search for blocks inside Gutenberg, I can search for basic block and this block is going to show up there. You guys probably saw there's also a category for blocks. Blocks are divided because there are so many of them, and so they divided blocks into categories. You can create your own categories. It's, uh, but I'm, this one, I'm saying, this block here, it's called basic block, and it's going to go inside uh, the, the common uh, blocks category. Next part, it's one of the most important ones, um, it's the yellow part here. All blocks will have an edit function and a save function. The edit function will be how, what's going to be the behavior inside Gutenberg. The save function is how you're going to um, store this block once you hit publish. What you're saying here is, Give me an element, a P, P is a P tag, is a paragraph tag. Uh, this, no, I don't remember what it is, but whatever. And uh, this is the content of the block. It's going to be the string that will go inside this P tag here. When I saved, what do I want? I want to save a P uh, tag with this content here. So no, there's no addition. It's a very stupid block, but I don't remember if, it, if it's like the attributes, but as... The operation that works. There it is. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Infobes. No, it was my max fault. Uh, okay, so that's one way of building blocks. Uh, and again, oh, so that's, a, that's very uh, helpful, sorry. When you're writing your block, if, if you go to the screen, to your Gutenberg editor, and you don't see your block there, it might be because your JavaScript is broken. And you can see this inside the Chrome console or Firefox, the same counterpart of Firefox. And I, I've run into this problem so many times. Like, I, 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 I was sure I had all the files there. But if your JavaScript has a problem, it's not going to show a warning in the screen or anything like that because it's JavaScript. So you're going to have this. Uh, this error here in the console usually. So keep an eye on that if you're, if you're building it and it's not showing up there. First place to look. OK, question is, I still feel there's a lot of code there, and we can make it simple, right? We can simplify it. There are a lot of nested stuff. I don't like that. Um, what can you do? So we can tr transform this block here into this. It's the same thing. There's no difference. But here, we are using uh, JSX, which comes from React, which comes from Facebook. Have a look. It's, it's the same thing. It registered the same block in JavaScript. The, both are JavaScript files. One is using JSX. The other, the other one's not. Very simple code. Same thing. This part here attributes of your block, 
this part here, behavior when you're editing, and this part here, behavior when you're saving. Okay, JSX. If you try this in any browser, this is not going to work. It's an HTML5 in the middle of, uh, of JavaScript code. It doesn't work. Because this is not JavaScript, it's, it's a syntax, an extension of JavaScript. This is not intended to be part of JavaScript ever. It's just an extension of JavaScript syntax that kind of makes it makes easier for us to read and understand what's going on there. Um, it was created by Facebook, and it's part of React. Then it's part of Gutenberg, too. Remember that I showed you uh, here? No. I showed ta -da -da. So here, this, this repo with Gutenberg examples, they have 01 basic and 01 basic ES next. So they, ha they have both versions of the same plugin, one that uses uh, JSX, and the one that doesn't. So you can see the difference in how much more code you need for um, when you're not using yes, JSX. Okay. Another thing that we are using here uh, is what they, they, they're calling ES Next, uh, kind of ES6, ES7, ES whatever. Uh, some browsers will not support some types of, uh, of some JavaScript uh, calls. And that, that, by the way, this table here is the support for JavaScript specs. Um, not all browsers can, uh, can understand ES7, which is a nicer, more productive syntax. And not all browsers, I mean, most of them at this point can accept, you know, I11. Um, not all, yeah. I11 can't understand anything anyway. Uh, but you can still use this nicer syntax inside your JavaScript code. Uh, so you can be more productive and you like it don't, the code looks nice and you get more productive, trust me. So how do you make uh, old syntax like this, very crazy syntax works in a browser. So if you try to, as I said, if you try this in a browser, it's not gonna work, right? You have to somehow get this JavaScript here, transform it in a way that all browsers can understand. And that's where uh, we have uh, the building process, which involves uh, Bubble and uh, Webpack. You have your, that's the JS file you're writing with JSX, for example, that weird syntax. We run a JavaScript process with Bubble and uh, Webpack, and it's going to transform it into this file that is going to be compatible across all browsers. So this small file here, and that's true, that's, that's the same file, same functionality, goes from this to this. No developer should read that, right? It should be only the browser. The browser, IE11, will understand that. Chrome will understand that. Same thing. Developers won't understand that, and that's fine. Uh, you go from here. This goes to the next developer. You, you run the build process, and you get to that version. Um, OK. If you need a block that we can edit, so right now, that's the same old block. Doesn't do anything. If we need something that we can edit, what should we do? There he is again. Uh, I'm editing the, the label, and there is an image that comes with this block. And one side view, it's, it's, it's what your guys were seeing in the editor, right? There's no, there's no visual difference. This is still black. This is still the same cute picture. Yeah. Update it. Polish it. Cool. OK, what changes? So the PHP part, we're jumping from that stupid block to this kind of better block. The PHP part doesn't change. 
you're still registering a block and you're queuing uh, JavaScript. Same thing. Same thing. But the JavaScript part, of course, is going to change. Let's go per parts. First part, you're giving, you guys know that already, you're giving the name of your block here. Whatever name you use here, it has to be the same name you're using in your PHP file. So you can bind them. Second part, the attributes of your block, like the title, how you're going to be able to search it. Category, again. This one is new. The attributes of your block, the content that you're going to provide, and, the, and they're going to stay with the block. What am I saying here? This block has an attribute called content. Sorry, it's a poor, it's a horrible name for it. But it could be anything. It could be like age. Uh, what else? Just age. Um, and then you, you're telling here where you're going to store this information about the block. And what I'm saying here is the information about this block is HTML and it's coming from this div. So whenever you save it, you're going to save in this way here. And then the last part, how edit and save. Always edit and save. This, this is going to be there for most of the blocks. Most of the blocks. And again, sorry. Oh, I yeah. say, so when you're typing, are you typing basically like directly into a div? Like it's, yeah, yeah. It's you're going to see that. Modifying state, not modifying the DOM. Type. It's modifying state. It's modifying the state of the, the component. Of the component. Yes, yes. Right. You're going to see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, on change. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. React. React. Cool. Let's see this part now. Edit part, how it's going to behave when you're editing it. If you guys know React, you know, uh, you know that you cannot return uh, sibling tags. You have to wrap it around something. You can only return one element. So. That's where this guy comes in. It doesn't do anything. It's not a div. Some people do divs, can do, can do like div, div, and wraps it up in just one element. It has to be one ele element in the end. This one is called fragment. It doesn't do anything. It just groups the two tags you're putting inside. By doesn't do anything, you mean it doesn't render as an actual tag in It's going to throw an error. If you try it, if you remove this, you're going to throw an error. Well, I meant by the fragment is not something that renders it in the end. No, 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 no. Um, you're receiving attributes, and you're receiving the function to set uh, attributes here. You can receive way more stuff. That's a ES6, I think, syntax. That's the only things I'm using. You can receive way more stuff here that you can use. It gets way more complex than that. But for now, I'm receiving the attributes that I set here. Right? Um, image style, this is, this is on the top. You're going to see that later. So that's just CSS. It's an object that contains CSS. Same for this guy, text style. That's the content, and that's the part that uh, it has whatever you want, we want to save. Sorry. And that's when you change this rich, so that's a rich text element, it's not a div. I think that kind of goes with your question. It's a rich text uh, tag, and you say, act like a div. That's what you're saying. Or become a div at some point. And you say, when you change content, you're going to set the attribute of content here, just update. As you change, update the, the, um, your content. Same thing for, uh, for a save, except you don't have the own change. You don't need it, right? You don't need the, the own change because that's when you save it. You're not changing stuff anymore, right? But you're still styling. And that's the part that will go uh, be rendered uh, once you publish. And that's the part that is going to be saved. In, in your database. Um, 
By the way, uh, let's, where is it? Okay. Same blocks we saw on the other slide. And here we have the styles. They're just uh, JavaScript objects. Key uh, value. Key is a CSS. Some of them I wrapped uh, around a single code. Some of them I didn't. Um, sorry for that. I should be more uh, consistent there. But, and you can give the styles inside the JavaScript file. It's probably a poor practice, though. I just did this to, to make sure we have a fewer number of files. Because ideally, you have to enqueue or CSS, your CSS file, too. The same way you're uh your JavaScript, you have to be able to do the same with, uh, with your CSS instead of just declaring inside of uh, inside our JavaScript. So that's how it looks like. Remember the two blocks, the meow meow thing, the meow woof woof? Once we uh, save it, it's not going to be a dynamic thing. Like on, when you go to the page, the, the post that we're posting this, it's not going to use React to load it or anything like that. It's just WordPress. It's just WordPress getting this from the database, right? Here we have image. And uh, this comes from the, the column um, because I use the column block. Is this front end or back end? Back end. Back end. Oh, sorry. Is front end. Front end is the published uh, page. So I published it and I, I hit uh, view source. Yep. And that's what it shows. No, nothing dynamic here. No JavaScript anywhere. It's saved like HTML because I gave the instructions to do so. Remember on the, on the save part? Yeah. yeah, same thing. OK, so I think uh, that's it. And that, that for now, uh, there, are, there are many things to do now. So that's just the beginning. Um, there is one thing that you can do, uh, that a way to, bu to build your, your blocks is by doing uh, server rendering blocks. You don't want to always use um, JavaScript to, to render them. You can have dynamic calls. I can, I can try to show that later to, to see how it looks like. But in this case, you don't need to write JavaScript. You can just rely on PHP for, uh, for your block. Um, co uh, block controls are like the controls you can have to give more options to your block, like select a caller. This is all WordPress is going to provide you with, uh, with nice controls. The same stuff you have in the customizer, for example, uh, you're going to have available for blocks, out of the box. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of attributes. Remember the attributes part, where we put the, the title and uh, the category, you can put so, like you can put a lot of stuff in there. Um, if you guys uh, use ACF, ACF, version 5.8, which is in beta right now, uh, introduced the, cap uh, the capacity to build your own blocks uh, using ACF, no JavaScript required. Uh, and it's going to perform like a block, but you can do purely on uh, using the ACF editor by adding your fields and stuff and uh, render it in uh, PHP. Very nice feature. Uh, REST API um, to some, maybe you, you don't want to save your blocks as uh, JavaScript. You want to your blocks to get something from the API. You can do that too, in both ways, in the edit part or in the save part. The code used for this presentation will be in this uh, here, uh, but don't worry about it. I'm going to put it on my uh, Twitter. My Twitter handle will be easier to uh, memorize. Um, and I'll put in the end. So questions, if you know, I'll, I'll go to the next one, but you guys can do any questions. Cool. Um, can you? Oh, wait, wait, you. Oh, ah, sorry. You. Can Let's you go into it. Can use jQuery or you're stuck with vanilla JS WWEs? If you can use jQuery, you can use jQuery. It's JavaScript, yes. Um, you can use vanilla uh, JavaScript, or you can use the, the build thing that I showed before. Use ESNX plus JSX mm -hmm. with a build process in place. That's important part. I think that I probably have to reinforce. 
is that uh, if you guys are using this, you need to have a, a way to build this code. Oh, but I don't know how to use NPM. I don't know how to use uh, Babel. I don't know how to use any of that. Come here on the. You can either use this. This is probably going to provide you uh, a builder, or copy this guy here. It's going to have a nice. Uh, all the NPM files are going to be there. You just have to modify one thing or another. But that's what I did, for example. Uh, I just using their Babel configuration file and their uh, package.json file. So you don't even that part you don't need to write from scratch. You shouldn't. Um, and then you can write this nicer code as as long as you have a way to build it. That's important. If you want to stick with vanilla JS, all this guy here, all this nesting craziness, you can do it. Then you do, wouldn't need a, a way to, uh, you wouldn't need a, a, a thing to build uh, your JavaScript, transpile it to, uh, to something that all browsers can understand. Uh, so you had a question, sorry. So you're gonna go Did, to sorry, sorry, sorry. Did, does, yeah, is that answer? Cool. Cool. Sorry. If you're going to go JSX, you're going to need Node. Yes. And where is Babel? Is Babel part of Node? Or is that a different tool? Babel is something you, um, let me see if I can show here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, Yeah, yeah. But I'll show you the files for the the package file that I used and the Babel file for that too. That I just copied from that from the repo. I'm going to show that. Uh, just a second. Well, <laughs> I see. It's probably the Wi-Fi here too. Are you using the Wi-Fi here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so wait a minute. Okay. Can you guys see the? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Babel. So I copied that repo, and that repo came with this. So that's the package file. NPM will understand this and will install all the all the packages that are defined in this, including Babel. This, 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 JSX, React, blah, blah. and uh, when you run NPM run script build, it's going to transpile and have that long JavaScript that I showed you. Uh, and as you're developing it, and you you wanna you don't wanna be hitting that button all the time, right? You change something here, you run it, you can make it keep running with this command here. So for every change in your source, in your JS source file, is going to generate a new transpiled version. Transpiled version is that long one, right? Um, and, and you don't need to touch that after, you just throw it into your server and you... You have to, yeah, exactly, it's a good point. Uh, that file, has to go with your plugin, right? Because the user won't be able to transpile that. So if you're publishing that in a plugin, make sure you have the transpiled file there. If you're using this JS, ES next plus JS X way, which is a lot of the plugin developers are going this way. Uh, and the Babel file is here. This also, I just copied this from, from that repo. What is saying that, uh, the code that I'm writing should work on all these browsers. You see IE 11 here? So whatever code I'm writing, it can be crazy JavaScript that I never saw before. Babel was going to make an effort to make it work inside the, uh, produce that long file and make it work inside uh, IE 11. So all users can use your plugin, for example, right? Any other question? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to um, access the block portion in the back end and make it look similar to 
your front end. Because when you're developing your own custom blocks, you can kind yep. of um, design it so that when the user is using the block, they'll be able to see what they're editing. Oh, I see the fields. Let me see if I can show the other presentation I had. I don't know. The, the short answer is I don't know. Okay. Because we were talking about the input field itself. You can change how they are presented. Just a second. I, there was another presentation I made today about, uh, about plugins in Gutenberg. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see if I can sh quickly show it here. Uh, it's a really cool example. Uh, while it's running, we can go to another question or something. We still have time, I think. It's going to take a long time. Cool. Um, any other question? Cool. Um, how stable is Gutenberg? And how many times do you crash it today? Uh, Gutenberg is stable. Plugins, no. Plugins are not. Right. Uh, a lot of the plugins that they claim, oh, we have a Gutenberg block. It, it might break. It's, it's still breaking for them. Uh, for some of them, to be fair, but there, some of them are doing the the doing due diligence of saying like, oh, it's better. Our, our Gutenberg block is better, so be careful. Don't expect anything great right now. But the core vanilla blocks you get with Gutenberg, they're great. They work. There's no problem with that. Yeah. And also, uh, I think that that kind of uh, Gutenberg has been running on WordPress.com for a long time. That's the default experience inside. If you create a blog on WordPress.com. The first one you're going to get uh, is Gutenberg. And people are, a lot of people are running Gutenberg already. And yeah. Have you heard about uh, how mm -hmm. these, these new Gutenberg plugins do with uh, WP scan and if hackers can hack into it and break the code? Uh, no. So there, there are no plugins specific to Gutenberg. Uh, no. They're just, I mean, there are plugins that will bring new blocks to Gutenberg. But they're just like any other plugin. In the sense of code, same thing. There's no way to tell that's a Gutenberg blog, that a Gutenberg plugin. The concept of Gutenberg plugin doesn't exist. There will be plugins that can give you blocks. And there will be themes that can introduce blocks too. Same thing. And it can do, they can do other stuff. They don't need to just insert blocks for you in, inside your WordPress installation. Uh, so here's your, uh, the ACF uh, experience. Let me see if I can present it. Nope. No. Come on. <laughs> Might be loading. Thanks a lot, Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can show the, the real thing here. Um, sorry. Any other question in the meantime? If you are a theme developer, there are some things you can do that will interact with the blocks, like providing some functionality uh, to them. Uh, but I didn't try. The only theme I tried is the 2019, which is the next uh, theme will come bundled with WordPress. Uh, uh, your question, sir? If I if I want to like take an existing core uh, Gutenberg block and just tweak it a bit, like I can pull that. Then, like, what's the challenge? Like, just keeping that up to date with, like, the same, making, like, I'm, I'm kind of screwed that way, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Because you're, it's whatever they do new, you're not going to get that piece uh, unless you, you you go through it and manually do it. But there's no automated way to do that. I feel. Is it, if I just want to, like, say, for example, like the columns one or whatever, yeah. I want to like limit the number. Like, yeah. I want the the client to be or, to you. Is it better to like? Exactly. So that's that's where I, I missed that. 
you can use, but then you're not copying the plugin, you're just extending it. Yeah, yeah. And then you're, you're going to depend on how well written the plugin is. Good plugins. Gutenberg one actually be cool if you could save it though. Probably. I, I would say so, yeah. Child. Uh, let me see here. Is that really a thing? A child plugin? Like a child I never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> now I want a child plugin. Oh my God, that's not a bad concept. Uh, I mean, the other way is just like forcing the main repository to then go ahead with that plugin. Yeah, but then when there's a change on the main one, it can be kind of messed up. Yeah. So I'm going to take your site. <laughs> Any other uh, question? So have you looked at the database results of the Swedenberg stuff? The, the, how it saves in the database? Yeah. yeah, the same way you were seeing on the, on the, on the screen. It's a little different. It I depends. I'm wondering how that's going to translate to five, because in, like, I've edited some things on my blog in Gutenberg, yeah. and it'll add comments around it with like a WP paragraph. Not all of blocks. I know what you're saying. Yeah. So. Remember the attribute part that says how you're going to save it? This one, it doesn't get the comments. A, a way of saving some of this information is by what you're saying. It adds some comments that it won't be visible, but these comments will hold information about your block. And that gets saved in the database. And if you go back to classic, you might lose information that way, right? Because classic doesn't know what this special comment, HTML comments, uh, what the meaning of them, right? Um, Yes, there is a there is a JavaScript uh, framework that does this parsing, and you're able to to exp to get the information out of it. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. when you're writing, like, say, a newer theme that takes advantage of these blocks, you can do whatever yeah. you want with them. Yeah. 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 Uh, sorry for that. Uh, any other question? Nope. Too bad you didn't try um, Gutenberg with sending existing themes. I'm curious to see how Me too. existing themes will, yeah. will hold up when you throw the plugin in. I tried different plugins to see how they are behaving with Gutenberg, like the popular one. That, that was my presentation in the morning. Uh, those slides will be available on my, my Twitter too. Have a look. Uh, some of them didn't work. Some of these plugin developers, they're just worried for us not to provide blocks, but to keep it compatible. I think that's the first challenge for plugin developers. Keep it comp compatible in both worlds. Mm -hmm. From there, if, if everything is, is OK, then start building blocks that will only work in Gutenberg. But uh, so yeah, that's. The bigger themes no. like Abadam, uh, DB, I can't think of any other ones, but anyway. So Elementor. Uh, any other questions? Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming.